We know it's a neurobiological disorder. We know there's a genetic component, but we don't have biological markers. There isn't a blood test. There isn't an MRI that can tell you you have autism or what kind you have. So we're looking at two kinds of behaviors, social communication and restricted and repetitive behaviors. And every child and every adult with autism is a bit different in how the deficits in those areas are different. In addition, we have um, general issues. Sometimes autism is associated with intellectual disability. I mean, that's not so clear when you have a two-year-old or a tiny child, um, but eventually it makes a huge difference if somebody has very severe delays across the board versus somebody who has autism but is actually of average or higher intelligence. And then there's also a range of language skills. So people can be quite intelligent but have specific difficulties in language. Um, there's a range of motor problems. Some people with autism are very klutzy or awkward and other people are not. Um, and then there's also a range of behavior problems that in children overlap with other aspects of psychiatry or psychology, like tantrums and hyperactivity and anxiety, um, all the things that anybody would struggle with. And as you get older, you begin to see depression in some kids, and in, in very rare cases overlap with things like bipolar disorder or schizophrenia.